Welcome to the Moraine Corner Bison Tour. We went for a bison tour on a nice sunny day at the Moraine Corner Bison. Mr. Art Grenville took us on a tour across the highway. Oh, they are beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah. How's that? This is some oats, I'll feed them. Oh, okay. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. So what are the things that you're feeding? Oats. Oats. Oh, I should have given it. Showed you some. Oh, that's, that's okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Uh, I think grain or the wheat. Yeah. Oats. So, so they'll come up to the wagon. So okay. So what type of uh, bisons are? All these are mostly plains, but there's some wood. Wood buff. Okay. Some wood in them. So how do you differentiate? Like, a, if you could please. well, if I could find an example here, the wood's got a little bigger frame and it's got a bigger hump in the front. Okay. That's one way to tell. The plains has a lot of hair behind its front legs. Oh, okay. Where a wood doesn't have as much. Okay. So when the calves are born, they're orange, like they, you see how okay, orange. Okay, yeah, orange, yeah, orange, like. So in about July or in August, they, they're pretty much the same color as their mothers. But okay. After three or four months. So our first calf was born on April. April. So that is a calf. Okay, year. okay, for okay. So, so the mo most of them are actually born in May, but they usually start in April. And we still got a few there that haven't calved yet. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. So what's the difference between the ones in here and the ones across the... Well, those uh, ones are, are fattening up for market. So they're two years old. Okay. So they're supposed to be going to, to market here. But okay. Everything's got pushed back, so I, I can't get rid of them right now. Okay. That's because of the... So, yeah, yeah we keep them until they're two years old. So. Okay. They're not two years old, these guys? No. Well, these no, are, these are the cops. These, these are, are the mothers. Mothers, okay. 
And then the ones that were born last year, they're... Uh, That's the blue? They're over there by those grain rings, on the okay. side of those grain rings. So this guy here, he's probably the boss. The boss, okay. See the other guys are going back. Oh, okay. How much they weigh? How's that? How, How much? much they Maybe 100 kg. How oh, much no. they weigh? Yeah. Oh, in tons? Probably. Oh, the, the bulls are, are probably 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds, wow. Oh. This guy coming up here, he might even be more than that. Oh, okay. He looks pretty bigger than that. Because. <laughs> But he's the boss, the one he's... Coming up, we'll see here. Oh. Actually, this is the first time, I, this first tour I've had, so I don't even, oh, for this I year? Don't even know what's Wow, happening. okay. Oh. But I think he's going to, when he comes up here, I think they're all going to Oh, there you go. <laughs> like, do you name them, or like, uh, you put well, in, like, numbers on them, or something like that, or...? The odd ball we might have a name, but yeah, we don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, no, the, no, it's... Yeah, maybe he's the boss. Yeah, he's the boss, it looks like, yeah. The other guy's not coming up. Yeah, he's the boss, you can, you can tell by the... <laughs> what do you call the sound, like, after that? The sound is like a... More like a grunt. Grunt, grunt, and then, then like uh, a, just to show that you know I'm the. I guess, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if they don't move like cattle, they, they kind of grunt. Yeah. <laughs> you might have heard the other ones grunting. Yeah. from the Philippines, are you? No, we're from India. Oh, India, okay. Uh, but we live in Canada for a while, so. Wow, yeah. You like it here? Oh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful country. It's very nice. Do they drink a lot of water or? Oh yeah, they, yeah I don't know do. how much, but they. But they do. Okay. Oh yeah, they, they gotta have water. Water and grass. And okay. Winter time we feed them. Well, this field over here. Okay. The big hill. Okay. I got corn on there. Oh, okay. So in the winter time we'll turn them into into the corn. Into okay, into the corn. Just leave okay. them stand and they'll eat it. Okay. So we get about three months grazing out of that, out of the corn. So I don't have to start a tractor up every day, like you had to feed them every day otherwise. Do you have people to help you or are you the one you want? Well, I pretty much do it myself. I got two oh boys, they both live in Calgary, but when, okay. we, when we have to work them or sort them, they come out and help me. No, no, just, sorry. And you said like a, a, a bison buffalo pretty same on. Well, you don't and wanna. Then, oh, the, out the, here they're the, good because the, they know. Yeah, they, the water buffalo is in Africa and these things are primarily in you know in North America, right? Yeah. That's and some in Europe or. Yeah. So if I was to walk down there, they'd yeah. back away from me. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, how but come? I don't, like a, I don't like, really trust the cows. When they got their babies. Okay. Like oh. right now. Oh, yeah, because they're... Just okay. in case. You okay. You want to walk between them. Okay. And I don't trust the bulls when in breeding bulls? season. Oh, okay. So this is not the breeding season then? This is no, not... August is when they breed. For oh, even reason, though they're together, they don't breed? Uh... Not normally, no. For some oh. reason, they breed in August. Only now, okay. It's, I guess it's the nature's way. Uh... Oh, so yeah, that's the nature's way. So oh, the nature's way. Yeah. spring. Uh, yeah, only the human beings, you know, like to do, <laughs> compared to the animals. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so they don't they fight during the breeding season or like well, the, the bulls, bulls sometimes fight sometimes. So who's going to be the boss. Okay. But but they don't hurt or you know like uh, really injure some. Well, I've, uh, I've seen really. them where they one guy got a horn in his stomach oh. or in his oh. in his hip. So then. But survive, right? So. He's out of business for a while. Oh. oh. Yeah. But they usually haven't figured out before. Okay. Who the okay? Who the? Before breeding season.
Only the boss breeds or everybody else get well, their no, chances? No, the, or? Well, the boss gets most of them. Most of them, okay. I think they all get it. Yeah. Okay. Some of it. But they all, the calves look the same color, right? Eh? Like yeah. a light brown. They all <laughs> pretty much like a, you know, like Yeah, a, they're all the same color. Okay. Some of the older ones might start to change. A little darker, I don't know, I haven't seen it. Like if you put them together you know, with the, you know, the, the cow and, you know, the normal, you know, cow, you don't differentiate because they look pretty similar. Yeah, you well, know, to the calves. They know who her calf is. Yeah. Wow. You can't tell, mother, right? Because mother, mother and the baby are here, right? Yeah, they are. Oh, what the bull? I mean, the male. What's that? Where is the male one? Oh, this is this are the, yeah, these are the, the big ones. The uh -huh. story. Yeah. These are the male oh, ones. The male ones. Bulls, yeah. So what this, about those ones over there? We found few over there. By our house? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah they're two years old. Yeah. So oh. the, that was the ones we're gonna sell for for meat. So. Oh, okay. okay. So when you say for meat or for fatting up, so how what do you do? Like you put a lot of grains to them? Yeah, or they get for taste or they get free choice oats. So I got some feeders there. They just, whenever they want some, okay. And then I give them some hay and then some silage. Si okay. So how long you this? You said you have this farm like a well. My my dad bought this place in 1960. Wow! But his his dad actually homesteaded in 1907. Okay. So they, they got some land on the other side of the river. That's where he started out. At, okay. My grandfather. So I heard that like uh, the bison meats are um, more expensive than the the, the cows. Yeah. Or the, you know the beef. So why is that? Oh, it's a better better product so no fat in them or like not well, less? less fat yeah. less fat okay it's high high in protein high in iron and less fat and less calories so it's, oh, okay. it's kind of a healthier red meat okay so the high iron is good for women because they're always shorter oh yeah 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 okay. yeah okay. wow yeah we honestly thought of buying you know a lot of steak from you today but that's okay there's always tomorrow you well, know? if I get your name when we get yes, some, please, I yeah, for sure, know. yeah, for sure. That's great. <laughs> yeah, this is. I've got a set of twins out here, and I'm not sure where they are. Oh. It's usually uh, the mother only takes the one, but I think one, she, okay. she took them both. There's a calf over here. That's very. Oh, okay. See this little guy there? He's yeah. not very old. He's probably born. Yeah, the, yeah. New, oh, wow. They are too. Wow. So, uh, how do you keep the the coyotes or other you know the predators away oh, from they these? Just, they don't bother them. They don't bother them. Okay, because they're okay. Because they're very powerful, eh? They. Well, the mothers are pretty protective. Protect. Okay. But like before, 200 years ago, before the, the white man came out here, there used to be wolves. And, and yeah. Wolves. Grizzlies out in the prairies. Okay. So that used to be their main predators. Predators, okay. But grizzlies? Yeah. Grizzlies eat... Uh, What's that? Grizzlies eat uh, calf? Oh, yeah. Wow, I, okay. I never knew that, okay. If they could get, get one. Yeah, the wolves are very, you know, very good wolves, predators. Like they, the wolves. They pack, they well, hunt you heard that Banff's got some, some bison now? Yeah. In the park? So I don't really know if, if any of them been killed by a bear or a wolf. Yeah. yeah. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> because I heard that, like, you know, in the farmland, they say some wolves or coyotes, they, they do a you know, hunting strategy. They kind of, one guy go in front of the, the mother, to, you know, to, just to distract. Yeah. And you know, the few in, guys come around. In a pack, and, they can you know. But there's no wolves out here. That okay. I know. And the coyotes. Yeah, they're well, too, way too small to attack. Yeah. Oh, you might see a coyote walking around or something. Okay. I've never seen them. So you just keep them like this during, even during the winter time or like just yeah, like that? Yeah, they stay out here every day. Even if it is minus 35, like my 30? Well, in the winter time, they got a pretty good coat of hair on them. Okay, they, okay. I got to get some more hair off the ground here. So that's... Oh, wow. That's the... I'm trying to see It 
It's almost like a down on it. So. Yeah. So in, in a real cold day, their best protection is on the front, so they'll okay. actually face the, the wind. Okay, they face the wind, okay. And uh, if it gets real bad, they'll look for some trees or something. But okay. No, they're... they're did, you, did Danny want to help yeah. you? Yeah. Kind of? uh, you want to see the wool? Just, they get a lot of this in the winter time. Yeah, that's that's how they survive the winter, you know, because. So in the spring it, they start shedding it off. Okay, yeah, I so see. You okay. See it hanging there. Yeah. And then about October they start growing it back again for the winter. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I'll leave. <laughs> He was a fur trader with the Hudson Bay Company back in the late 1700s and early 1800s. And he was he was trained to read this instrument here called the sextant. Okay. So he could look through that and to the stars, he knew exactly where he was. So so he was a fur trader and he was also a, a kind of a map maker. He's one of the first white guys out here. So anyway, uh, in uh, no. November of uh, 1792, he's at a fort up by Elk Point, which is about 100 miles east of Edmonton on the North Saskatchewan River. And he went with the Indians on horseback from Elk Point all the way down to Fort McLeod in southern Alberta. That's about 100 miles south of Calgary. And he spent the winter with the Indians down south. And then in the spring of 1793, he came back close to where, where Drumheller is, and he went up alongside the Red Deer River, which is about seven miles uh, west of here. So he went up river for about 30 or 40 miles and he angled back towards Elk Point. So he got back to Elk Point on March uh, 21st of 1793. When he came to this area, it was the middle of February. And he, uh, he had a journal, so he kept track for everything, everything he did every day. But anyway, when he came to this area, this is what he had to say. And he's, he was also the first white man to discover coal in Alberta. You can see it in the sides of the hills next to the river down by Drumheller, the black seams of coal. You've probably seen it. So it says, well, Fiddler's discovery, one of the province's major coal fields, is of great interest to Albertans. His description of the innumerable buffalo that fed on the grasses above it is of no less interest. Shortly after don't even the coal, his journal continues. The buffalo are very numerous on the northeast side of the Red Deer River and near it. From the north to south, the ground is entirely covered by them and appears quite black. I never saw such amazing numbers together before. I am sure there was some, some millions in sight, as no ground could be seen for them in that complete semicircle and extending at least 10 miles. So from here to Drumheller, it's about, to the top of the Drumheller Hill, it's about 10 miles. So on that particular day, he would have been going through Buffalo the whole distance to get here. Just, that's just a huge... Million, millions of them. There's a, there's a ridge just about four miles over. If you stand up, you can see the trees there. I think he was up on that ridge and he could probably see five miles each way. So, <clears throat> anyway, that's what he saw this. And then 10 days later, he was still in the midst of the vast herds, which were gradually crossing the river towards the west. As fast as some crossed the river, others filled up the space behind them so that it appeared to him if all the buffalo in the country had concentrated into this one small section of Alberta. So that was 1793, there was millions of buffalo in Canada and the United States. They just roamed wherever. And then about 90 years later, there was just a handful left. They almost uh, wiped them off the face of the earth. There were just a few left. So they figured there was maybe a couple hundred at the most. So it had been for four or five individuals that captured a few animals or a few calves and then started breeding them back. They probably would have been extinct. So by 1900, they had the numbers up to about 1,000. And today there's probably about 400,000 in Canada and the United States combined. Mostly on farms and ranches, but also in some parks in Canada and in the States. So if people keep eating the meat, there'll be a reason to to produce it, so gradually those numbers will increase, hopefully, and uh, their goal is to have a million head in about 10 years' time, but I don't think it's going to happen that quick.
well, this pandemic's going to put a crimp on, on the industry for a little while. And uh, we'll see. But that's the goal. They, they'd like to, have a mil like to have at least a million in about 10 years' time. But I don't think it, I'll see it in my lifetime. But, but anyway, they're not, they're not going to go extinct, I don't think, you know, unless they get some major disease or something. Fuck.